Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this video, I'm gonna briefly go over every building you can build in the game. Even the ones that are locked behind console commands. Now there's over 120 buildings technically that you can build in this game. I've gotta be brief and quick on each one, hopefully. I don't want this video to be an hour long. Now the purpose of this video is to give you a brief rundown. So if you're new to the game, you're gonna find this useful. Tell you what the building does, whether it has a functional use or it's just decoration, etc. Okay, first is the basic fire. Now this is very cheap to make, very good for cooking meats, very good in caves because you don't really have access to rocks down there, but you do have sticks. With fires you can add like cash and stuff to make it last longer. Next is the fire pit. This one is basically an upgraded version of the basic fire. It just lasts longer and looks a bit better. There's nothing really more to say about it. If you have a proper base it's probably better to build this one. This is the standing fire. This one doesn't last forever like in some games it might. There used to be a bug that if you ran into it, you'd catch on fire. This still applies to the ones you find in caves. There's only a few in caves, so be careful you don't run into them because they will catch you on fire. The main gimmick with this one is that you can get a fire arrow, run up to it and light the fire arrow. So it can be cool for defense, I guess. Next is the bonfire. There's a misconception that this will attract enemies. There's nothing in the code to suggest it does. All the fires will attract them once and then that's it. So once you build a fire, it will attract them. I don't know if you have to light the fire first. I'm pretty sure once you build it, they're gonna send one group of cannibals to come to you. So don't worry about it advertising and stuff like that. You can't cook meats on this one and be careful because if you run into it, you can set yourself on fire. Just like these two here. These ones can cook meat and stews as well. So I'm going back on things, I'm forgetting things. This is the temporary shelter. These are good for caves. You can save in them unlimited amount of times, but once you sleep in it, I'll see if this works. Yeah, it exploded. Sleeping's not that necessary in the game. It does make the game a little bit easier, I think. Actually, I should quickly cover this. If you sleep, it advances time. When time advances, more harder enemies spawn. So if you play at nighttime, it might be a bit harder to begin with, but harder enemies won't spawn so quickly. For example, I think on hard survival, day seven is when the mutants spawn, I think. Next is the... Hunting Shelter. I'm going to be forgetting a few of these names. This one is actually probably one of the better ones because this one doesn't explode and it's small and compact. You can't really build it in caves. You can't climb in it. Birds will land on it. If you hit the birds, you probably will damage the structure if you've got building destruction mode on. It's usually my go-to because of how cheap it is. Next is the log cabin. Now these are really expensive to build, but they do look nice. One of the only buildings you can build that's got the gaps in the roof filled. It's got a nice log that goes over the top as well. It's got some decorations in here, but yeah, nothing special. You can build a few things in here. I think a lot of beginners will build this. It's just very expensive and it comes with stilts as well. So you can adjust that, which is very useful. For beginners, you don't really understand the custom building that much. So this might be a good option. Let's say that's 91 with the stilts. We go really high, 143. So the more stilts you have, the more expensive it's gonna be. So it's fairly realistic. But if you build it too low to the ground, grass is gonna come through. Good, just an expensive option. Also with shelters, they have a marker on them, as you can see here. If you turn it to gray, turns it off so you won't see it. I've got them switched off at the moment because I've got so many buildings here, it's gonna show up in the recording and be distracted. But all of them have it. Looks like the log cabin one's at the front of the house and the save and sleep options in the middle. You can only save in shelters. Next one is the small cabin, same thing. Just small. It doesn't have a floor though, and it will align with the, the terrain. So you see it's on an angle. Not a major thing, just whether it bothers you or not. It's got a big window here too. Cannibals can see through windows, just so you know. There are more shelters, but I'm going by the survival guide and how they are placed out. So next one is the uh, rabbit cage. You can capture rabbits with the animal trap and put them in here. If you've got between two and four, there's a chance they can breed. It only happens when you sleep. So that's probably another incentive to sleep. Once you reach five, they'll stop breeding. So take them out, put them into other cages. To increase your chances of breeding actually is uh, build multiple cages. I only have two in each. The purposes of breeding is just you're gonna get more meat and rabbit skin or rabbit fur. Just keep in mind when you get a lot of these, it's probably gonna drop the performance of the game quite a bit. If you pick one of them up and let them go, you can't get it back again. And the old versions of the game used to be able to just chase after and pick them up and then chuck them into the cage. Next is the water collector. It fills up when it rains or if it's in the snow, there's like a more heavier type of snow, it will fill up. These are very useful. You need a turtle shell, so you need to be able to get one of them. The water does disappear over time, so it doesn't last in there forever. You can have them inside buildings as well. They'll fill up in there if it rains. Realistic, probably not, but it's an option. Next is the garden. It's a custom garden, so you can choose what shape it will be. And you can plant aloe, coneflower, and blueberries in here. With gardens in the forest, you don't need to add water or fertilizer in it. You kind of just build the garden, add the 
the seeds and just let it do its thing. The yields, like one seed will get you like two or three aloe. It's more efficient than finding it out in the wild, but your chances of finding seeds are much lower. There's a chance every time you pick one up that you're going to find a seed. So you, that's the smallest you can make them, but you can make them pretty big. I think you can make it a bit bigger than that. It just depends on the, the ground, how flat it is. You can always just put it on top of a building, like a platform or something like that. Next is cave gardens. Now I can't place them properly without mods. These make mushrooms and you only have to plant one and then it will spread because that's what fungus do. They spread like that. And all the types of mushrooms, I think there's six different types. Two are poisonous, four are not. Mainly used for stews or adding poison effects to your weapon or poison arrows. You can build them on the outside world. I spawn them in using console commands, just like you can build the normal gardens inside the cave. Once you go into a cave, the type of garden you build changes to a cave garden and same when you go into the outside world, but you can glitch between two worlds. It's too complicated and outside the scope of this video, but I have covered it before. Next is the drying rack. You can hang all these meats on here. So fish, lizards, rabbits, normal meats, arms, legs, heads. I don't think you can eat the head. That takes about 12 minutes to dry. And when it dries, it lasts forever. It doesn't go off. Dried meat does dehydrate you. On hard survival, it's a lot more than like normal and hard. It's like 20%. On normal and hard, it's only 5%. Very, very useful item. Should be one of the first things you build because you can't carry many meats. You've got to whack them and store them on here. Next are the stick holders. There's a small stick holder and a large stick holder. I don't remember how much they actually hold specifically. But like this is six sticks and this is 24 sticks. But in the options, there's this on... PC, you just got to press R and it'll switch. So 24, six sticks. You're paying a lot more sticks for this and it doesn't hold much more than this. Where the benefit comes in is if you're trying to save space. If you're trying to save space, then go this one. So like on boats and that. Very useful item. You want to be storing as many sticks as you can. Next is the log holders. Same thing, though I actually think the larger log holder is a better option. So that's 26 sticks, that's 16 sticks. So it's not that much more and it does hold quite a bit more. I think 12 and seven. Next is the log cart. This is a very, very useful thing in the game. It used to have a flake. You could change its color, but you can't change it anymore. When I turn on show overlay icon, see it's a pink. A lot of people have complained about that. Pink is hard to see. Those are the houses down there. As you can see, they're different colors. Something I've noticed is that I used to play on 4K. Those icons were a lot smaller. Being on 2K, they're a lot bigger. And if you go 1080p, they're even bigger. <laughs> Just something you might find interesting. Now, this can hold rocks and sticks and bodies of cannibals. Uh, three at a time, but keep in mind they do despawn or they might not work in multiplayer. The best use for it is storing sticks because it can hold a lot. I can't remember the exact numbers. I recommend you check out the wiki. I wrote most of it, so I know it's accurate. These are indestructible too, so they can't be broken. All the other stuff can be broken if you've got building destruction mode on. If you drive these into water, you're going to get them lost. You can't control them again. The only way to destroy them is with a hole cutter. That is technically a structure. That's how you remove things in the game. Next is the rock holder. Similar thing. When you place it, press R and it changes it. It's probably the least useful of the lot, though it can be good to have. The thing is rocks spawn just about everywhere, whereas logs and sticks are more in specific places. Next is a weapon rack. It holds four weapons. More for decoration. You probably want to keep your weapons on you. As the storage system in the game works on a like crafting map, it's not sort of like slots, so you might as well carry it. So it's more for decoration. There are some weapons that don't store on it and you'll have to use the ground weapon holder, but I'll get to that. Next is explosives rack. This pretty much stores explosives. The only annoying thing about it is that when you go to store something, it's so bright. I don't know if you could tell. So if I switch to Molotov and I want to put Molotovs on here, I have to press R each time I move across. Probably the main use for this would be storing bombs because they are quite difficult to make. Dynamite's more useful and dynamite's more common. You can't make dynamite, you can find it. So it varies in use this thing. Next is a small storage shelf. It's like one log less than the bigger one. It doesn't store as much. So what's that? 12 items, 10 items. Oh, so it's not that bad. I guess it depends on what look you prefer, I guess. The items you can store are like candy bars, cans of drink, booze, medical items that you make, and pills, I think. Yeah, your pills. Yeah, put them on there though. I wonder if I couldn't find them. Next is a skin rack. This is actually quite useful because you can only hold 10 of each one, but all the skins can be held on here. Only issue with this one is that you can't build it on boats, probably because of its size. That's a bit of an issue. Makes it harder to move them. I didn't realize this, but there's a little rope tied around the top of the skin to hold it on there. That's kind of cool. Next is the armor rack. Now this holds bone armor, mutant armor, lizard armor, or stealth armor. It also holds lizard skin as well, but it's cheaper to build this than it is to build this. This can be useful too. Say if you're in a cave and you're killing a lot of cannibals, which is where it mostly happens, you'll often fill up on bones and bone armor, so it can be good to store it for later on. Next is the bone basket. It just holds bones. It can be placed up on high things like tables and that. Very useful because you can only carry 15 bones at a time. It's probably a good idea to put it next to a fire, so when you chuck the cannibal bodies on it to get your bones, you just whack them in straight away. Arrow basket. 
uh, can be useful, I guess. It stores arrows, all the different types. They all look the same when you go in there, and it stores a lot of them. Make a quiver, and then you can carry 50, I think. Next is the custom foundation. This is probably one of the main structures you'll be building with when you get in the custom building. It is very, very durable. For it to be destroyed, these pillars have to be destroyed. For it to be destroyed, I think 50% of the pillars around it have to be destroyed. An interesting thing, and I've never really gone into detail with this, is if they attack one spot, which I don't think they will, this won't be destroyed. You could keep hitting this for days and it won't break. You have to go around and hit different parts of the pillars. Or maybe it's like 25%, I don't know. Also, when you destroy structures, you don't really get many resources back. As in, you probably won't get any back. It's a very complicated building. I've done many tutorials on it. Next is the custom wall. And it can be changed to a window, a door, or just a wall. So like three pieces, you just press the R and switch between. The door can have a lock on one side or the other. Doesn't really matter. The cannibals don't knock anyway. Very important building you'll be building with if you get into custom building. Next is the uh, rock wall. Works very similar to how the custom wall works, but it's pretty good for defense. Cannibals can't damage it, but mutants can. Another very complicated building that I've done many videos on. Because it's custom, you got to really have an idea in mind of what you're doing with it. You can build pillars and stuff for them or with them, which can be very useful. Very cheap way to build. Next is a custom floor. Another complicated building that I don't know what to say much on it because it's so complicated. But you only have to build one side for it to work. You can cancel the rest of this and just have it floating like that. Might hurt the realism squad, but uh, it's just something to keep in mind. It's only dependent on the one you place it on. So I place it on this wall, it only needs that wall. See what I mean? It's complicated. Next is a custom roof, very complicated as well. Can be good for ramps. You can't fill the gap technically. You have to find other ways. I've got videos on that one too. Once again, another very technical structure. Now we're moving on to the not so technical structures. Structures? Structures. This is a custom stairs. I think it could be placed 13 times, 13 connections, but they're all dependent on each other, meaning if you take out one, the whole thing's going to come down. Very expensive to build, though it has its uses. Next is the custom platform, or just platform. It's height adjustable, so the higher it is, the more expensive it is. Cannibals can climb this. If you have it behind your defensive wall, they can glitch through the wall and actually climb it. So yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one though. But it can attach other pieces to it, such as the climbing rope and the tree bridge. I want to turn those icons off. They're really annoying. So this is a tree bridge here. I've actually got a piece of wall underneath. That's complicated, but I'm just showing you the type of things you can do. I was getting stuck on that, so it's not very good. But you use a climbing rope to get to the top of it. And you can connect them all between each other and that sort of thing. Useful, though very expensive. Here's one I almost forgot i've had to go back and record it <laughs> it's the cliffside platform what you do is just get the normal platform and whack it up against the cliff it does work on other objects as well not rocks but it might work on those big tree stumps it's a lot cheaper only thing is it only has three sides to connect off but that's fine you can even use it to go around the sinkhole around the inside like that. I uh, probably should cover the tree bridge now since I was just talking about it. It's uh, attachable to things. So I have to remember off the top of my head, but it's the basic wall, simple stairs, platform, gazebo, and log cabin. But I've covered this in my 50 buildings tips and tricks video. Next is the gazebo. This is probably more of a decorative item, though it's used to make the infamous zipline log catcher, which is currently the only way to get logs to be caught over long distances, because otherwise they explode. But yeah, there's not much more to tell, except for obviously it's got a height adjustment thing. The more high you go, the more logs it's going to cost. You can also attach climbing ropes to the corner here. Let's go up this way, because I built up this way, and I can't remember why. Ah, oh, yes, the tree structures. Yeah, the tree platform. That's another one. Same thing, it's got four corners you can attach things to. Trees are very vulnerable though. Even if you've got building destruction mode off, the tree can still be taken down like armsies and the girl mutant and the worm want to stop them from getting near it. Oh, I totally forgot about this sap collector. Might quickly cover it now. It's pretty much the most efficient way to get sat. You can get sat from cutting down trees with an ax or a chainsaw, though it's much more efficient to use the pot and do it that way. And you can attach quite a few to one tree. Don't lose your tree, because you'll lose your pot. You're going to carry one pot at a time, so making multiple of them is frustrating but going back to the treehouse this can be built with or without the climbing rope so technically it makes it multiple structures so you place it and it automatically comes with a climbing rope but you won't be able to attach a tree bridge to it so you press r to change it just removes it make sure you pick the right one for what you're trying to do because you can't change it i don't think you can let's try hole cutter no nah, it's part of the structure so technically it is one whole structure this one doesn't have one but if i wanted to i could add it to it and I can remove it. 
So make it without the rope and decide afterwards. But this is an Alpine treehouse. It's a more expensive version of the normal treehouse, but it's got a, like a balcony and it's a little bit more stylish, I think. I'm not a big fan of tree houses because of what I mentioned before about the trees. They're just too vulnerable. So if you have all your crap up there and it obviously just comes by and just one hit, boom, say goodbye to all your stuff. So that's a bit confusing because there's multiple variants of them. But yeah, next is the zip line. Did I forget anything? Hello. No. This can be used to take logs down. That went through that tree. Very useful building. You'll be using it a lot in this game. Except if you get caught and build it inside of trees, why did I do that? Oh, probably because it's slept and I got tree regrow mode on. You use it for a lot of things, getting around and that sort of thing. It does have the length limit unless using ultimate cheat menu makes it unlimited. There is a tree zip line, but I don't recommend it. Let's see if I built one. Where is it? Oh yeah, I built it way up there. So you can build it very high on the tree, but uh, you won't be able to reach that. But it might be good if you're building a tree house, you could access it. I like that one. I have to jump to use it. And it just works exactly the same as the other one. The reason I don't like them is because they're attached to a tree. Tree is very vulnerable. Rock path. It clears the grass. You can clear it with the hole cutter. They take quite a while to make because you have to run around getting rocks and that. I don't improve the speed of like your run speed or your log cart speed, but it can make it easier to sort of see where you're going. Mainly a cosmetic building. Actually, purely cosmetic. Just keep in mind, the more you build, the more intensive it's going to be on your game. So if your PC or PlayStation can't handle it, might want to keep it in mind. Also, increases load times quite a lot next is the stick fence it's a stick fence can't really build much off it it's a fence yeah next is a bone fence pretty much the same thing except it uses bones but a main issue with this is that you probably want to be using your bones for other things like armor so unless you've got a lot of bones i'd avoid using it cosmetically it does look pretty good though next is the simple stairs the basic structures in general are very complicated with their building they're one of the first things to be out of it you can do all sorts of crazy things with them just to give you an example i'll attach that to that and attach that one on top. You can cancel this. It's not dependent on the on what it's attached to. You can attach tree bridges and climbing ropes to these. So they're quite useful. They're very clean. It looks like it's worth a lot more logs than five logs, but it's only worth five logs. Next is the basic door. There's not much to say about this. You probably shouldn't be building with this if you're a beginner. If you want to experiment with more advanced stuff, that's the way to go. Same with the basic window. You cannot attach tree bridges or climbing ropes to this one. So keep that in mind if you're building with it. The basic wall is the same thing, very complicated. You can build tree bridges and stuff off it. I don't recommend building with it unless you're into the advanced stuff. It's funny that they're called basic structures, but they're not basic at all. They look basic, but their building mechanics are very complicated. Next is the crane. It has a rope of on the middle that you can pull up and down to get up and down things. There's a rope on the corner too. Now make sure when you're building this, you see the spindle there, right in front of you there, that it's in the place you want it to be because that's the place you're gonna access it from. If it's in water, you won't be able to pull it up and down. But yeah, it's height adjustable. I've got a whole video on cranes and I recommend you go watch that if you wanna know more about them because there's a lot of mechanics to deal with them. But you can build quite a few structures on it, many more than this. As I mentioned, probably best to go see the video if you wanna know more about them, just because of how complicated they are. Like how to adjust their height, the things you can build on them, what you can do with them, etc. Next is the stick marker. Now these are really cheap. And if you're struggling to navigate, I highly recommend you use Use them they're affected by the markers as well so when it's gray it's switched off but there's a variety of colors can't name them you just have to go on the color of the flag that they are very useful building to build it can really help with navigating maybe have a system of what is like a cave say a cave might be say red if you find a pot maybe blue to reference water purple might be special weapons or items maybe modern arrows orange might be you, you can you can use your imagination very good though this is a target it's decorative mainly you can make prisons and all sorts of things out of them eh? they're actually quite cool what you can do with them don't start hitting it with melee weapons and throwing explosives at it though it can be good for practicing your archery and that if you want to be a bit more immersive next is a bench there's another item in the game called the chair and when you sit on them it regenerates energy so you don't have to eat to rely on energy if you're cold your energy drains much faster so if you sit on them and listen to a walkman you'll regenerate a lot quicker i did make a animal trap with these place four and then put a animal trap in the middle apparently it still works this is one of my first videos i did with that cheap to make only two logs next is a bed very expensive to make it's not something you'd be making early on it doesn't look very comfortable but it's pretty much the only premium bed you've got access to because it uses four rabbit skins you want to be using those skins on like the stick holder and berry pouch and stuff like that instead of making a bed though this is the only bed you can have on a boat so eventually you probably will end up making one next is a table it's just a table you can put some buildings on it but yeah next is a chair 
It's got the same function as a bench. You sit down on it. Now, in multiplayer, you can have multiple people sitting down on this if you've got friends, which I don't, but only one person can sit on this, as far as I know. It's very expensive to make, so it's like a, more of a premium item. Next is the fireplace. It's not as durable as you think, so making a wall out of them is probably not a good idea. Oh, might look cool. Never done that. Can put a fire in it like that. It doesn't come with its own fire, so you have to put one in it. It's quite expensive to make. I don't know if you can place items up on top of there. You can build decorations on there. Yeah, purely decorative, not essential at all. Next is the couch. I actually totally forgot about this, but it's similar to the bench and the chair. You can sit down on it. It just looks more fancy. It's very expensive to make because you use a lot of deer skin, as you can tell. Next is a small table. As with the other table, it just does table things. It's very small though. Next is the chair. Once again, I forgot about the, <laughs> this chair. It's a bone chair, just a chair made out of bones. All of them regenerate your energy. Nothing more to say. Next are the skins. So like you've got the deer skin or deer hide decoration and the rabbit fur decoration. They're just decorations. Save before making them because sometimes they can glitch through a wall. See, I've actually got this on a basic wall because sometimes they can glitch through the wall. I think that's a... Yeah, I think with a basic wall, it's guaranteed to kind of stick out. But if you build it on a custom wall, it might dig in. I'm not sure. Risky. Purely decorative. Doesn't do anything. This is the bird house birds will land on it and leave their feathers behind feathers don't have that much use now since they added modern arrows and modern arrows respawn so they do have some crazy building abilities so you can build them on top of each other to make some interesting things so you can extend them out on top of each other can you attach it to yeah basic wall so i just had an idea the idea is not that fresh anyway. Useful though, if you like putting speed upgrades, I don't like speed upgrades on weapons because it reduces their damage too much. Why don't I put these on here? Maybe to show you that they can be placed on anything. There's birdhouses that can be placed on things. It says a birdie landing on the birdhouse right there. Next is a standing torch or standing light. The thing that makes them difficult to make is that they require a lot of sap if you make a lot of them. And the skulls are a pain because skulls despawn really quickly after you burn a body. Though they're very useful and they don't flicker because the ceiling light, which is this one inside here, these can be attached under pretty much everything and they've got no collision so you don't have to worry about hitting your head on them. And they can be placed in cool positions like I got some under here and they go up and down with the crane. So if I switch the tonight, they do look pretty cool. But they flicker as you can tell. Probably the only moving light source in the game. But these ones don't flicker. So they're flickering. Something to keep in mind. They just provide light. They don't attract the cannibals. Next is the skull trophy. It's just a trophy with a skull on it. These can be good for marking things. For example, if I built all of these rock walls that are around this custom floor, I could place something like this on here just to let me know that this is the one that's actually holding up. So if I destroy this rock wall, the whole floor is going to collapse. It's pretty complicated, but that's the use I found for them. But they don't do anything. They're just decorative. No collision either. Now, the next one is head trophies, and you can put quite a few heads on them. Pretty much anything that's got a head, you can put it on here, except for the cannibals, because that's just... Yeah. Now, I don't know whether to class this as one structure or 16 structures. So there's a shark, rabbit, crocodile, boar, squirrel, goose, tortoise, raccoon, deer, seagull, lizard, fat man, cow man, Virginia, mutant baby, and the armsy. So basically, all you do is get the head and you just whack it on. Shark head looks the best, I think. The armsy one looks quite good as well. You can also build off the crocodile head as well. Birdass. <laughs> Looks like there's teeth holding on to it. <laughs> oh, that's quite funny. I wonder if you could do that. But yeah, it's only one stick, and then you put whatever head you've got on it. Oh, it's sitting behind it. I was hoping it would sit forward so you could put the item and it makes it look like it's holding it in its mouth. Like it holding a katana or an axe, that'd be cool. There would be a way to do it, but I'm going off topic. Next is the weapon holder. Now this holds most of the weapons, I think. It's very similar to the other weapon rack, the one that holds four, but it might look better for what you're trying to do. It only holds one weapon though. That's only two sticks. Next is the ground weapon holder. Now the reason I've put these two items here is that these two items, uh, upgraded rock and the spray can, do not fit on these ones. So if you want to be an ultimate collector, you can not by doing this. Next is the wall hanging garden. It only holds two flowers. Now, blueberry seeds don't fit in here because they're too big. Uh, fairly useful, uses a lot of sticks, might be better used as a decoration because then, you know, if you've got a house and it's all brown, it add some color to it. Next is the chandelier. It's a very expensive light to make, though it is very nice looking. It does have collision though. So if your floor is very low and you build it, you're going to hit your head on it. It never used to add collision, then they added collision, which was kind of disappointing, but I suppose it's more realistic. I think it might provide a bit more light than the others, but I don't know. Here's an example I made. 
I actually made this up about six months ago and I just haven't got to this video yet because I just kept putting it off. Just keep that in mind if you've got a low hanging roof. It's mainly going to affect you if you have more than one story because you're not going to put a roof above the first story. So you'll just have a floor. You hang that, that's what you're going to get. Next is the stick frame and bone frame. They are just frames that go on walls and you can put things on them. So if I go add all story items, you can put Timmy's picture on it like that. Because I added all story items, it only adds one picture. Say if I wanted to put a picture up there, right? Do you put the frame up first or do you put the picture up first? Well, here's the thing. If I want to put this here, well, it's not in the middle. How do I get it back? Well, you can't really. So the best way to do it, place the picture. Hopefully you placed it right. You can't pick it up again. There you go. So save before doing that, if you can. Though purely decorative. Here's another one I forgot. It's the wood path. Basically just getting the custom floor and not attaching it to anything. This was the original floor in the game, though it doesn't work very well. Get caught on it. Typical forest dude can't lift his feet. I haven't found any use for it. I think it was related to the old building system with the basic structures and that. It's actually got me thinking. I wonder if it does connect at all. By the looks of it, no. It doesn't snap to it. I would have thought it might have. I'm gonna try something. No. What a useless door. <laughs> the floor's blocking it. Yeah, there's just nothing you can do with it. So its uses are very limited, and it's five logs for that. Oh no, that's only three logs. Huh, used to be five logs. That's not too bad. Oh, I can't think of a use for it. Because you can pretty much do everything with a custom floor in its custom mode. You don't need this. What happens when you put a rock wall around it? Nothing. Can you attach a custom roof to it? Jesus Christ, why is this still even in the game? <laughs> God, it's midnight, so I'm easily triggered. Next is the animal trap. Am I going the right direction? I think so. Yeah. Animal trap. These will have a chance of catching lizards and rabbits. They'll sometimes catch a deer and crocodiles, but I don't hold them. It's kind of weird. But you need to reset them each time you uh, capture one. Now, these are quite complicated, but not really. It's kind of like if you're in an area and you're doing stuff, build one if there's rabbits or lizards there, and eventually they'll wander over and get inside it. You don't have to chase them in there. You don't have to put bait in there. It's every now and again, they'll just start wandering in towards it. On Heart Survival, it's much more difficult to capture things because there's not as many animals. I've got a couple of videos on it. It really does need a lot more detail and not for the likes of this video, I think. Next is the leaf pile trap. These are cool. You can use them in caves to trap enemies. So like you lure them into a tight canal and then light it. Obviously, it's raining so they're going to go out very quickly one use trap so once it's uh lit gonna burn for its time and then go out ah rains doesn't seem to be affecting it too much but these can be good for placing in the front of gates and stuff like that you can also shoot them with things to set them on fire oh, i used up all my fire arrows so i think you can shoot them with that yeah and fire arrows anything that's got a light you can throw molotovs at them it'll set them up they've got a chain effect so you can make them into a shape and that and write things with them next is molotov trap when you walk over it catch on fire not very good if it's raining and that's the bomb trap i don't know why i placed it in the bush what did i do that for that's a pretty cool effect eh? but yeah uses up a bomb though bombs are hard to make i haven't really used many of them they're single use traps so yeah the leaf pole trap is definitely the better one because of the amount of leaves you'll get in this game next is the deadfall trap now this is my favorite trap of all the traps mainly because of how cheap it is to make and you can do all sorts of things with them you can make a wall of them just face them out so you don't have to actually build a wall yourself they'll just run into it and die it takes one hit to kill cannibals and two hits to kill mutants with all these traps actually they all do the same damage except for the hanging rope trap which i'll get to yeah it's three logs and three sticks i believe so it's very, very cheap to make. I could always just look here. Yeah, three sticks and three logs. But they can run through them and not trigger them. But that can happen with all the traps. This is the hanging rope trap. It doesn't work on you. And it doesn't work on mutants either. And when it captures a cannibal, they'll be upside down and you'll have to kill them. And if you go near them and they're facing you, they can still hit you. So you have to go from behind. And the other thing is too, their friends can set them free. Looking at the cost, five logs, two sticks, three sticks, three logs. This cannot kill mutants. Cannibals can set them free. This will just kill them outright and it will kill mutants. So I don't know. It's kind of funny watching them upside down. You can torture them and that sort of stuff. I don't say I support this, but if you build a leaf pile trap under it and they're caught, you can kind of just go up 
and light the leaf pile trap and yeah i'm gonna let your imagination do the rest now next one is the happy birthday trap there's a lot of discussion on which one's better the happy birthday trap and the dead fall trap now some people say that happy birthday traps better some people say the dead fall trap is better now the reason i prefer the dead fall trap over this one is purely the cost happy birthday traps are extremely expensive compared to a dead fall trap it uses more of every resource and uses two ropes and i like to save my ropes for making zip lines now a lot of these resources can be get if you spend the grind to get them though i tend to prefer uh to be practical with my builds this does have a lot of uses like you can make a wall out of them and that sort of thing oh oh yeah if you place a molotov trap inside with our uh, leaf pile traps you can set off a, a bigger area like a big fireball eh totally forgot that was there i just stepped in it just realized the game screen goes really dark when you're looking at light interesting one of the things i don't like about these is that like <laughs> you can't really jump over them if you made a wall out of it like <laughs> i would have jumped over that but the trigger is just too big i think with these you're more likely to get cannibals if you've got a mutant right he comes in he gets hit by this he's gonna be stuck he's gonna start swinging at this it's gonna take two hits to kill him Whereas these, you can jerry place a lot close to each other and they're a lot easier to make. So if you just put one right next to each other, say if you're making a wall like this, I mean, it's going to come in because of his body size, he's going to get hit by both of them and it's going to kill him. But if he gets stuck on this, he's going to probably destroy this. That's my take on it anyway. They're the only two traps worth building, I think. Because next is a rope swing trap. Now this is good. It does the same amount of damage as the other two. Problem is, is that it's attached to a tree and trees can be taken down very easily by armsies and stuff. And only swings one side of the tree. So it's cool, very cool, but not very useful. You can swing it around. Yeah, two hits to kill mutants and one hit to kill cannibals and that. Cool, it's just a shame that it's only attached to a tree. I'd like to see it on a foundation like one of those ones. Next is defensive spikes. They've got the highest HP in the game, I believe, of any structure. Mutants can glitch over the top of them. Like when a cow's charging or an armsy's doing his rampaging triple swing attack, he can glitch over. So it's a, it's a tricky one. Next is the defensive wall. It's very good. It's a wall and it comes with a gate function. The gate can only be built on, where is this gate? Oh, it's on this side. No one else is getting confused. It can be made into a double gate, but you need a flat surface to make gates. Normal walls can be built on all sorts of elevations, but the gate needs to be on flat land. And to make a double gate, so like it's relatively flat here, so it's going to work. So you just do it on both sides. And then see, it's connected to a double gate and just a single gate. Has to be at least five or four pieces, I believe. Now, this is a defensive wall upgrade or whatever it's called. Defensive wall spikes or reinforcement. Ignore the spikes thing because that's not really true as to what it does. It just increases the health of the wall by 40%. Also makes it more straighter, usually. Once you place it on there, you can't place another one. It doesn't damage them and there's also collision with it. So you can walk on it and stuff like that. They're very expensive to make, but you could actually stack them a lot. And each time you do it, it increases its HP. And you can put it on both sides and just keep placing them forever and ever. And that wall would be so strong that it'd take forever for anything to get through it. I think this is an oversight, this one. But there you go. Next is a catapult. Now, this isn't a very good catapult. I don't recommend using it for defense. It's good for storage, though, because it's the only thing in the game that can store skulls, and you can store other things. Just keep in mind that if you're going to use it for storage, once you get the items in there, see that? I can't get them out. Only way to be destroyed or to launch it. And if you've got one inside your house, <laughs> that'd be funny. It's not that good to aim with. It's got such a limited turn radius. Here's something that Zebulon taught me. So this will be fresh for anyone who knows the game inside and out. You probably don't know this. Jump. See, it's not moving, right? I do this jump and then I activate the thing. I've got to find where it's gone. Where is it? Oh, there it is. See, look at this. But it doesn't turn, but I can launch it. I can go sideways. Oh, behind me. <laughs> uh, that might be useful, but it's a bit tricky to get it working because usually you're in a rush to try and get rid of whatever's coming to your base. Next is the arm effigy. Now, the thing is about effigies, I'm going to explain this all because they all perform the same function except for this one and I'll get to it, is that it's basically red paint on a stationary position. When you've got red paint on, cannibals are unlikely to attack you, but it has no effect on mutants. So if you have this and you light it, it becomes red paint on a static point, so they won't go near it most of the time. 
but there's a lot of randomness written into the code of the enemies, so they will sometimes ignore it and just think, stuff this, I'm going for it. So only while it's burning. When it's finished burning, all the bones and stuff will end up on the ground. Now, ones with heads in it, you're going to get skulls, but if you're far away and it finishes off, all the skulls are going to disappear, and sometimes bones do disappear too, so you want to be nearby for when that finishes. So that affects all the FG. So there was the arm FG, the large FG, and the small FG. It doesn't have any different effect from what I know. Now this is the custom effigy and you can attach things to it. So you can attach bones, legs, heads and that sort of stuff. All the things I don't have. So you can kind of make custom things out of it. And it's kind of a shame that this is its purpose that you light it. Because once you light it, it'll burn down. But yeah, there's an example of, I don't know what the hell I was making. You can't really get the things back. Actually, I'll see what you get back if you use a hole cutter on it. Absolutely nothing. This game is very generous. It's more of a decorative thing, but it serves the same function, I think. I haven't actually tested it out because I don't find them useful at all, but whether you just built a custom effigy without anything on it and just... Oh, that's a stick marker. <laughs> I just didn't even realise that. They're very similar, aren't they? Oh, you can't light it on fire. You probably have to put something on it. I have to put one thing on it. So one stick. That looks kind of bad. Burning a cross. Yeah. That ain't a political message. But um, anyway, yeah, so that might be worth testing out. Might be a cheap effigy. I don't know how long they burn for. In my opinion, they're that useless that I never build them and I never really tested them. So there you go. The next items I'm just going to cover, these ones here, are all schematics that you need to find in the game. There's three spots, I believe, or four. The glider is useful, sort of. you got to kind of need somewhere to hide or jump off. That's probably why they added the tower. I'm actually no good with flying, and it doesn't interest me that much. It's a bit gimmicky because you can't really interact with anything. you got to carry it with you. Wherever you land, it's going to land. So if you land in the water, you might not be able to get it out. It's fairly expensive to make. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a building, I guess. Yeah. It would be cool in Sons of the Forest if they could have something that just attaches to your back so you don't have to carry around this. The fact that you have to carry around limits its use, I think. Next is a tower. It's a tower and it's very expensive to make and it just goes on forever, it seems. But there are um, cheaper ways to get up high. Using a custom roof, you can get it up to be two and a half times higher and it will be 20 times cheaper, but it probably won't look as realistic as this. This is on an angle because I didn't place it flat. But you're supposed to take the glider up here and then you go, wee. If you fall off here normally, you will die. But I've got God Mode on. It's like 200 and something logs. It's so expensive to make. Next is the cross, I think it's called, or the totem. Yeah, that's what it is. It's decorative. You can build off it, sort of. Yeah, it doesn't have that much use. Next is a coffin. Uh, Zebulon taught me this. Zebulon's the one that came up with quite a few ideas that I've done videos on. I got his permission, of course. Like the log catcher, he came up with that idea. What you can do is put gardens in there make it like a garden box you can also half put a small garden in there or a custom garden and grow stuff out looks quite cool when the seeds come out but obviously i could have done that a lot better that was just a quick job yeah it's the idea for it next is the church uh it's a church it doesn't have a sleep or save function you can use it to build things it's actually got the highest hp of any building in the game i think one of the highest I think a defensive wall, defensive spikes might be high. I can't remember. What I did with it, I managed to find a use for it. I built a floor, a second floor for it. And I was able to build like a, I made like a medical room out of it. So it was like a, a bit of a hospital and a church at the same time. Yeah, not much to say about it. Next one is probably the most useful one is the coaster, which is intended for players to use the turtle sled and go roller coasting. It was called a coaster, then it was called a log track. It changed names. I'm not sure why but it's actually quite useful. I found it's more useful than the custom stairs for a lot of things. It can fit a log cart up it, but it's a very tight fit. And you can drop logs down it too, and they'll slide down. You can actually use this to make a ramp down at the bottom of the sinkhole. Oclixie taught me that one. The British McDonald's chef. You can do quite a lot of things with these. They're quite good. It's a custom structure too, so you can build it. I probably should be showing you these as I'm doing them. This one, coaster. So it's custom like this. You can build it in sections. Now, I should tell you that the top part, this part here, that's invulnerable, right? It's this part that it can be damaged. So worry what can get to these things. It's the same with the custom stairs as well. But I don't know how long I've been recording, but I'm already starting to lose my voice. I probably should have covered these ones, but they had to be built in water, so they're down here. This is the large raft that requires two people to be technically driven properly. I don't think you can build it in single player anymore. You might be able to, I don't know. But uh, its building space isn't that much better on the houseboat. So yeah, you need a team effort for that one. This is the houseboat. This one is better, I think. It's got the thing 
you can build inside here. You build all on this platform, you can't build inside these pillars anymore. You can't really build up here either, can you? No. Yeah. You can build all on the top of the houseboat. I've done many videos on the houseboat, but you only need one person to drive it. That was a bit of a crappy placement. If you put your water collectors there, you can jump up on top. So you can build your things like uh, block holes and that. I only recommend this one, even in multiplayer. They're a very good boat. Next is the fishing trap. I've never really mucked around with these before. But if you go to your normal animal trap, your rabbit trap, this is probably what confuses players. On land, it's a rabbit trap, but it catches lizards as well and squirrels and raccoons, all those other things I forgot. You place it near water, turns into a fish trap, but it costs rope and I like rope for my zip lines. So yeah, it's kind of one of those air eh buildings that you can make. Next is a small raft. This is okay, uh, very cheap to make. You can build things on it and it can tip over. So if you've got too much weight on one side, it will tip over. And there's a glitch where you can walk underwater with it. But uh, yeah, I've got to take a piss if I'm recording that long. I think it's the fastest boat. I don't know, the speeds might be all the same. I don't really see the point in building this one. It would be easier for going up this uh, river lake thing. Let's make a houseboat. Next is the dock. It's quite expensive to make, but it's procedural, meaning you can build quite far out with it and do all sorts of crazy things. A houseboat can be tied to it. I've showed this in the 50 buildings tips tutorial, I think. Uh, it's not very useful because boats don't float away in this game. There's no wind, there's no tides, stuff like that. But it's cool nonetheless, it's just expensive to build with. I think that's all the structures you can build. I'm gonna go into the structures that can be added with console commands because they were either removed from the game or just never added to the game. Now this was a small wall. I think this was supposed to make custom building a bit more custom but uh never made the cut that doesn't make sense because it was cut i think yeah anyway moving on this is a ore that you can add and don't activate it because you get stuck on it you can't get off it i probably could get off it just using other console commands off the top of my head but uh, i don't want to find out i think this was made to be for custom boats but they were never added to the game that's what i think it was for which is most unfortunate if that was the case i don't see any other reason to add an ore to the game it's functional with paddles you don't move yeah I don't want to get stuck on it. Next is the head effigy. This was replaced by the custom effigy. It was just a head on a effigy. It's a, uh, yeah, cool. This was a small garden. I know it looks exactly the same as the other one, but it was actually just a single placement garden. You couldn't customize the size. Eventually when procedural building came out, custom building, you could adjust the size, but it's still technically a building. You can't make it anymore though. And there's a wardrobe that never functioned and never made it into the game. This was towards the end. I think they were pretty much done with the game and they wanted to move on to other things. And then there's the large drying rack and they changed it to a single drying rack just because it was too difficult to access the meat on them because there's a lot of racks here. It was a lot more expensive, but it held a lot more meat, but it was a pain to access them. And the reason it's inside a rock is because you can't build it from the book. You have to place it and it places how it wants to place. If I place it on here, it builds under the floor. That's why some of these things are just really wonky. This is what I'm going to include, but it's not really a structure. It's actually the cave climbing rope. You can trigger it outside, but I think you have to do weird stuff to make it work. Yeah, that's it there. And because I've got mod API on, ultimate cheat menu, which I usually don't, I can show you it. That's what it looks like, the ones in caves. When you normally place it on a basic wall, it doesn't do that. It's just a stick with a rope hanging out of it. Nice little feature. Now I'll put mod API on because I was going to add the stash, but it looks like you can't add it anymore. Doesn't appear to be in here at all. But I'll show you a picture of the stash, but it was basically a structure that you could store items in, but you could put them in, but you couldn't get them out. I think it was content they decided to go against. It's difficult with this game. Oh, what the hell? Oh. <laughs> I love this game. Because the way inventory management works in this is that you pretty much carry everything with you. There's very little inventory management. I actually like it like that. It's a good break from all the other ones where you have to spend like 15 minutes after a 15 minute raid <laughs> sorting the items. Now for this structure, I have to fire up a very old version of the forest. Time until public alpha release version 10.10. .10. <laughs> 2,329 days. <laughs> Minus. It looks so different, eh? Oh no, it hasn't wiped my save, has it? Because there's no console commands back then. Everything has to be done manually. Lister's version has save games. The very early versions of the game didn't have save games. Just built that treehouse. There's no dynamite in the game, so it cut down lots. Oh, this is so annoying. I want to thank Zebulon for helping me find this version. Because this thing I'm about to show you was only in the game for about two or three patches. So it was quite hard to get. Now, I thought it wouldn't be fair if I didn't go through and actually make the treehouse. So I went ahead and did it. it. Didn't take so long when I went and got the modern axe, which was on the yacht. That's where it was back then. But yeah, really frustrating to get up the stairs. 
and the stairs aren't held by the ropes as it is in the blueprint. The first half is fine, but then the top half is really bad. It's probably why they got rid of it. So an easy way to get up the stairs is to run forwards and strafe at the same time. It does that thing that speedrunners do where you move a lot faster. Would have been cool to get something like this, like more of a ladder sort of thing instead of stairs. You also couldn't rotate the treehouse in its blueprint form. So the way it situated was the way it placed. Also, I thought I'd show you the drying rack in its full form because back then this is the way it used to look. I was only able to find a lizard. Turtles and all sorts of things couldn't be put on the drying rack limbs as well. Oh, if any YouTube sensors are watching, I'm just stretching my leg and game and I've painted it red, just so you know. Now, next to the items that you get if you finish the game and pick the ending that allows you to continue playing. So I don't think many of these are spoilers, but yeah. I really don't think they're spoilers at all, but I'm going to show you anyway. But I thought I'd just give you a heads up. First one's the TV, purely decorative. And next is statues you can make. I'm not going to go into details about these statues. There's a woman, one variant standing, one variant sitting. And there's, I think it's a child. Yeah, it's a child. One variant standing, one variant sitting. They don't do anything. And there's a dog, which I thought was a cot when I first saw it. And next is a car. Very expensive to make. But yeah, it's a lot of detail in it. You cannot drive it though. Maybe if I spawn the ore on top of the car, I could drive it. I wonder if that was be an Easter egg. That'd be so cool. Now that I think about it, this is technically a structure when you place it. Now you get this if you pick the ending that allows you to continue playing. And it basically activates horde mode or passive mode. If it's red and you place it down, it's going to spawn cannibals and mutants towards you. If it's blue, it makes them go away. It doesn't work that well. It's not going to work now because I've got enemies turned off. I wonder if I could turn it back on, it would work. Oh, enemies are on. Where are you then? Must have enemies switched off. Yeah, it's a bit gimmicky. I've never really played around with it. Doesn't interest me that much. But you might find it fun. It only spawns a certain amount though. I think there's a threshold in the code to prevent too much spawning. Yeah, so that's it. Those are all the buildables in the game. I think I covered them all. Oh crap, I'm standing on one right now. The SOS sign. When you build it, a plane will fly over the top. But you can't do anything. And it's just decorative. And that's it. I don't think you can remove it either. Can you? No, once it's placed, it's placed. It doesn't remove the grass either. So yeah, that's it. Hopefully you found this useful and hopefully I kept my bias to a minimal amount. I do like to express it just because I know this game very well. And there's just a lot of things that aren't worth waste your time on. But since I've got this here, I'm going to activate it. Where is it? There we go. It makes the water splashing noise. But yeah, I cannot get off this. Okay, yep. Go to hull. Oh, look. <laughs> I take it with me. <laughs> Poison myself, but uh, go to cave two, go to geese lake. I still got the ore. I'm glad I didn't pick it up. Oh, I'm nearly in the boat down there. Kill local player. I've got god mode on, still holding on to the ore. <laughs> Imagine if he's dragging the ore with him. Oh, he is. I don't know <laughs> what's dragging me. I've got enemies off. Oh, still holding on to the ore. <laughs> Don't spawn the ore in, friends. Oh, it's all glitchy and stuff. What is this? I'm floating around, but I'm not. I can't. I'm still paddling. Go to hull. I'm stuck. Okay, invisible on doesn't fix it. Oh, I can do other things, though. Look at the detail of that fire. Oh, we're going places now. Oh, the video's over. I'm just kind of stuffing around now. I'm not doing anything. It's just doing it. Uh-oh. I typed in go to ocean. Oh, uh, no idea where I am. Yeah, it just looks like you can glide around a little bit. Oh, no, I'm kind of like a ball rolling around. I'm affected by altitude of things. Oh, no, it's too steep. I can't get up it. I can't control anything, by the way. What if you could turn yourself into a boat? I'm like an ant. This is grounded, but it's not crap. <laughs> oh, I'm holding down shift and moving, and it's actually doing something. Oh, looks like I'm picking up speed. What the hell is going on? It looks like I'm going really fast. It's just because I'm right on the ground. What if I go under the water? Oh, getting airborne. I'm under the water. I've got invisible on. That's right. Off. Quick.
This way. I'm stuck. Oh no, that didn't work. Turn invisible on just made me go fall through the floor. Oh no! Yeah, I don't think there's any trick here that can be learnt. Maybe. You turn yourself into a boat. That's what I was hoping for it to happen, but... <laughs> nah, don't pick up the ore if you spawn it in. It's in the console commands. Anyway, <laughs> completely derailed for the video's purpose, but oh, it was fun. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.